So I finally got around to breaking out Battleground Historical Warfare, uh, Second Punic War, um, and wanted to talk about it. I want to talk about it before I pack it away for now. Um, I really just um, got into just the first few steps into the basic rules um, and uh, just to get a taste for how it actually plays and I'm really pleasantly surprised. Um, this is a nice, fun, I was going to say little game, but it's not really a little game at all. Um, and even this battlefield here that I was playing, this 1500 uh, point battle, is really the smallest, I think, uh, smallest that the rules are really designed to um, handle. But you can have battles up to, well, the, I think there are, scenarios that go up to like 4,000 points armies and I think that uh, I think that that would work well probably 4,000 point army you might want maybe teams of two teams of two um, I uh, but I mean it, having said what I just said there uh, reminds me that you know I'm not a miniatures player which is what uh, Kind of drew me to pulling this out in the first place. Uh, miniatures game without miniatures. So um, this really hit the target for what I was looking for, and and succeeded a bit more than I expected. So what was I looking for? Um, I was looking for kind of the the hard, basic, simple, straightforward. Uh, rather traditional um, miniature style um, battle game um, yeah and and that is definitely here um, that's definitely what I got um, one thing I will say about that um, to the extent that this is a good example of the kind of traditional straightforward battle game, miniatures game. I don't think it's soloed very well. Uh, I, I definitely look forward to trying this out face-to-face -face play, in face-to-face -face play. But um, for some reason, <laughs> maybe miniatures gamers understand this uh, uh, way better than I do, but um, this, this wasn't that great of a solo gaming experience, which is funny because I think the same type of battle in a hexing, in a traditional hex encounter, Ancients War Game format, could be more solitaire friendly. No, well, both, this style of game is not is not uh, not solitaire friendly, but I mean, I, I think a hex encounter war game um, might be a little more fun solitaire. Um, but anyways, uh, I look, I will look for an opportunity to try this face to face. Um, so what I'm talking about is battleground historical warfare, Second Punic War. I have the basic, get what they label as the basic game, and I also have the reinforcements. Um, same, Second Punic War, reinforcements. Um, <clears throat> so, this was a very enjoyable, for like, first step into, again, like I said, traditional style, um, ancients, miniatures, war games. So, I got out a uh, green battlefield, featureless battlefield. Um, I pulled out the basic game. Um, what you get, uh, you have your comprehensive rule book, this 
small um, compact rule book. Um, okay. Um, okay is a rule book. So I got through, so I jumped right into the quick start rules, which by the way worked fine. Just two pages, really basically movement and, and combat. So I jumped right into the quick start rules. Um, I used um, I used the quick start um, armies provided in the basic game, which worked out fine. Some light troops, some heavier foot troops, and a little bit of cavalry um, were, worked fine. Um, so I started with these, you know, basic quick start armies. Started with the quick start rules, jumped right in, started moving and rolling dice. Um, so the first thing I noticed I had to do is, you know, get a lot of dice. Um, now I should say I, I like I like a lot of dice because I like. I mean, I had the Romans rolling the black dice, red on black. <clears throat> Carthaginians rolling black on red. I mean, separate rolls um, for each side, not not necessary. Um, but I think next I figured out. Ooh, I got to mark um, hits because combat being simultaneous. Um, if uh, if the if this unit. If this unit causes hits to this unit, um, if it causes, let's say, two hits, I want to mark it because when this unit goes to battle back, it's still um, battling back at its full strength, not not reflecting those those current hits. So I got out a bunch of those dice to uh, mark current hits. Um, what else then? Uh, uh, next, I wanted to mark units that needed to do a route check. Um, so I got out a bunch of black markers for noting uh, required route checks. Um, got through uh, a few turns of the quick start rules, um, and then uh, I got to the basic rules. So I got all the way through the basic rules, um, and yeah, all the way up to, but none of the advanced rules. So got to all the, all of these basic rules. Um, so right away, <laughs> let's take these Numidian cavalry. This is a good example. Here we have some. Equite. Anyways, some Roman cavalry here. Uh, as a matter of fact, what's the description? Um, Roman cavalry was drawn from the social and economic elites in Roman society, but was outmatched by Hannibal's heavy cavalry. Okay, that's the little flavor text. So you got some pretty solid Roman cavalry there against these Numidian cavalry. What's the Numidian cavalry? Nothing in particular. Equipment, throwing javelin, shield, and light horse. Okay. Um, well, you got the, the picture there. Numidian cavalry. Okay. So it's interesting in the quick start rules. Um, these units are just kind of kind of bashing away at each other fairly, I don't know, I guess, as you would expect looking at the, the number of hits they can take and looking at their combat, their attack and defense stats, um, all kind of, well, as you would expect, a little um, generic, a little vanilla. But boy, when, when I went from the quick start to the basic rules and started factoring in all of these special rules, so I think every unit I came across in the game, every unit has, um, so this is your play side, right, um, as the unit, um, 
stands or whatever they're called in, <laughs> in the world of miniatures. Um, and on the back, you have all these special, one or more special rules or modifiers, characteristics, whatever. So, you know, the, these Numidian cavalry, they don't cause impact hits. Basically, they don't, uh, they don't smash into their target at all. Um, and that's, I guess, understandable when you consider what type of unit it is. And then ranged attacks. Uh, ranged attack uses the javelin rule. Okay, good. Skirmishers, cavalry, and ranged attacks against Numidian cavalry get minus two. Minus two on the attack dice. So when, when the Roman cavalry attack the Numidian cavalry, normally the Roman cavalry roll four dice, but they're just minus two dice. That's 50%. <laughs> reduction in dice so so right away the numidian cavalry become an actually pretty formidable foe i mean they move seven inches they have the ranged attack they have 12 courage or morale um so suddenly these numidian cavalry which are essentially light cavalry became pretty formidable foes just by adding those special those special rules, which, which I like. Um, that's where the, the genericness was definitely falling away in my gameplay. Um, so that was a good thing. Um, going to the, going to the, uh, going from the quick start rules, which use no orders. I mean, quick start rules really are just movement and, and battle, both ranged and melee. But going to, from quick start to the basic rules, we add the, the orders. So this is ranged attack order. This is a close order. So, you know, close on the nearest enemy for combat. Um, I mean, as with, I mean, written orders of some sort got to be really, really old. Go away, way, way back. If way back in miniatures wargaming, if not from the very start. Um, and so it, I can see how it's really needed here because um, I, I think that it, it gives just a little bit of flavor of the players having to make a battle plan, the battle plan being the initial orders for their units for, for units and then and then the units start to execute those orders otherwise it's uh, like with the quick start rules I mean the army's just like you know um, there's a starting gun and the armies just smash into each other which is uh, well it, that is what it is but with the orders players can get at least a little bit more nuanced in, in what they're doing and how they're going to do it in timing and everything. So those orders are changed using these uh, command points or command actions. Um, uh, what were they called? Um, the orders, uh, and I just played with the first level of three orders hold which is kind of your defend order you know close advance for combat and ranged attack there there's actually a little bit more to, that you can add to the or that you can incorporate into the rules you can you can move to uh, objectives uh, you can close on a particular enemy unit um, you can I think you can close to a certain range. So th there is more. I just started getting, just barely getting into the basic three uh, orders. Um, yeah, command actions. So for every 500 points of that st of the starting armies, um, the player gets one of these uh, command actions. So I pulled these out um, so I could remember and mark where I use the command actions. You don't have to do that, but um, this started getting a little more interesting uh, as well, as you would expect, though. It's not, it's still, 
It's really just the way this game implements what still seems to me the straightforward traditional miniatures war game format. But but it's good, like these extra rules that give the units individual flavor are introduced. I mean, they're introduced bit by bit as you use them as opposed to having a lot of uh, collected rules. Um, combat modifiers. Now, combat modifiers. Um, none of them are unusual. You know, attacking rear flanks, charging cavalry, so forth. All pretty much as you would expect. What I what I do like is that um, the combat system, uh, the uh, these modifiers, you can get just you can get a little bit of a um, little bit of uh, um, uh, a little bit of articulation in combat mechanics and resolution in that you can have modifiers to the number you, have, you can have modifiers to the number of dice rolled you can have modifiers to the attack ability and you can have modifiers to the damage ability and each of these obviously can be defined separately so attacking to your flank you're going to roll one less dice, die, one less die, but no modification to your basically two hit and two damage rolls. Whereas if you if you are pinching a target unit, you're going to get plus one to your basically your attack ability. That's again that's your two hit ability and plus one to your damage ability. Um and so on and so forth. And of course, changes to morale or, or courage as they call it. Um, so that's nice. Um, as I said, okay, so as I said before, when I was talking about the game or in an earlier video when I was talking about the game, it's nice that uh, all of the um, game distances are <clears throat> defined using um, the sides of a card so they so distances are referenced to short side and long side uh, all the way down to one half of a short side short side of all the cards is two and a half inches so a short side is one and a quarter inch with clearly marked um, uh, mid midway points or center points and then three and a half inches for the long side however <laughs> I went ahead and switched over to uh, traditional ruler only because I didn't want the extra, I guess, wear and tear on the cards um, as I was sliding it around on the on the battlefield here. So just to save a little bit of wear and tear on my cards, I did switch to uh, traditional ruler, which worked, which of course works just fine. Um, um, when I got to, when I got past the quick start rules, of course, we brought in these, um, decks, it's a Carthage deck and a Rome deck. And these are these, uh, command cards. They give you all the, the, again, the unique things. Uh, about ancient battle, metal, parry, fumble, force, strike, might, hardened. So what's hardened? You know, play during an attack, either before your opponent rolls to hit or before he rolls to damage. Your unit gets a plus one, um, basically plus one uh, defense. Wait, plus one power or no, toughness um, this attack the attacking unit gets minus one die roll this attack so the attacker 
going to go down in one die roll, one die rolled, and you get plus one toughness, which is basically your ability to um, avoid damage. Um, and you got all these different, these different, uh, there, there are multiples of the same, but uh, interesting little, just again, to add the little um, unique, stuff um, to make the battles a little more again unique to break up the genericness and I think it did, it did that well by the way I think I did I think it did that well so there's the one for Rome um, some are the same some look different so courage of numbers play after one of your units uh, fails a, a courage check if your unit has at least one backup unit, it passes instead. That is, it's it's backed up. If it has no backup units, reroll the courage check. So yep. So obviously, these are, these are the modifications to the standard mechanics and rules that are always nice. You could as just as well get that on a table, but um, but here it's a card game anyways. You know why not go with the cards, right? Um, None, I mean, I just started, just started playing with those cards. I didn't notice any that were dramatically, um, <clears throat> would, would dramatically imbalance the game. Um, you do write directly on the cards with dry erase marker. So, uh, you know, the order goes right on the card. You're marking off damage boxes, which this is... This is not any different than uh, a traditional like troop roster, I imagine. Separate sheet of paper, but it's nice. Uh, actually, it, this system really is nice that so much of it is directly on the cards, including, you know, I haven't even mentioned yet that these um, these images are uh, superb. I mean. I don't think I could ask for anything better as long as, and I found this to be the case, as long as the cavalry um, correspond at least closely in size, scaling to the infantry, I'm okay with it. And I did not notice any glaring mismatches in um, scaling. Um, but yeah, other than other than the great miniatures, uh, I mean full color miniatures, right? Um, and by the way, I will say, looking across the little battlefield here, the the images really did, I guess, draw me in, in the sense that I could almost. Um, I could almost see this as a, as a, I don't know, a tray of, of miniatures, um, pretty, pretty darn close, um, to giving the illusion of, of, uh, you know, brilliant, brilliantly painted miniatures. Um, I think it was pretty darn close to giving that illusion. Um, so yeah, you, you write stuff right on the cards. I didn't find any issue with that. Um, so, so again, back to the the basic game. You're gonna get your you're gonna get your rule book and your cards. Um, you have your you know your starting army. My my cards are already starting to get mixed up between the basic game and reinforcements. So, in the basic game, you're going to get enough for your your basic Roman and Carthaginian army, the the units, and then you're gonna get your your command cards. In the in the reinforcements deck, you're going to get um, first of all you get this scenario booklet, which has uh, design notes, um, little descriptions of the units, um, Roman faction abilities, Carthaginian units. Um, so, so some background reading, um, and then 
uh, some scenarios. Yeah, then scenarios. Um, little uh, idea of how to set up terrain, deployment zones, um, starting setup. Um, more, so this is a 3400, uh, what, I'll round off, 3400 Roman points against uh, 2750 Carthaginian forces, points, forces, points of forces. Lake Trasimene. Um, so that's almost 4,000 to about 3,200 Carthaginian points, forces uh, in points. Um, Cannae. For, again, 4,200 to 3,800. Big battles. I I do think maybe teams here. Uh, special rules for solo play. Ooh, I didn't actually see that. Uh, didn't actually see that. Um, and more. So you get Zama. So you get your who's on 6,500 Roman points against 7,800 Carthaginian points. <laughs> wow. Um. Okay, they have uh, full armies and reduced armies. Okay, so why do I say those big battles probably need uh, need teams? Because there's a lot of die rolling, and the uh, and because this game uses the mechanic of okay the attacker. So back to. Well, I don't even want to use that example. Um, no. Okay, so the Italian swordsman um, banging it up against some scutarii. So the Italian swordsmen are rolling five dice. Um, the two hit number is basically the attacker's skill minus the defender's skill. So once you get the number of hits, let's say three hits, you're rolling those three hits to determine um, if they cause damage. And damage again is the power of the attacker minus the toughness of the defender. So maybe you wind up with two hits. But it's also possible that well, it's also possible you roll, obviously, five hits. Ooh, you get five hits. You roll for damage, and you get zero damage. <laughs> and you just roll ten dice for, for no result. Um, and what I found interesting is that the attacker is rolling both. Attacker is rolling to hit, and then, and then the attacker is rolling to damage, to, to cause damage. This isn't even where... You know, the attacker is rolling to hit, and the defender is, you know, rolling some type of savings type throw. Um, nope. It's all, as far as I could tell, all the dice rolling is on the, you know, the active player. Now, now in battle, they're both going to battle against each other simultaneously. But, uh... It's not back and forth. It's not opposed die rolls. Um, now, I guess in a sense, it's opposed skill and opposed um, lethality or, or something like that in the sense that you're comparing attacker's values to defender's values. But, uh, but yeah, I just noticed that interestingly, my Italian swordsmen are attacking, I'm rolling to hit, and then... I'm rolling to damage, um, is what it is. Um, so there were, I did notice there were some times when there was a lot of dice rolling with, uh, with not a lot of effects. I mean, a lot of the, 
it's a lot of die rolling canceling out um, doesn't really bother me but I, if you're yeah if you're the type that where you roll a lot of dice you want to see a lot of damage it's not gonna really may not happen here always um, <clears throat> so this definitely um, fulfilled my expectations for wanting to play a traditional miniatures war game with minimal, minimal, <laughs> next to no <laughs> setup preparation, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, yeah, I was right in. That That is great. Um, and another good thing is that this game, surprisingly, I, I started off by saying this was surprisingly fun. Surprisingly, this game... Um, got into my head in the sense that when I was away from the game not playing I found my mind wandering to to thinking about playing it not that not that there's any thinking about strategy or anything per se but there was some thinking about what what might happen and also um, how can I uh, maximize the use of these different types of forces um, try to get my one side's advantages against the other side's weaknesses and, and so forth. Um, so, pleasantly surprised. I will be playing it again. I'm very happy I finally broke it out. I'm happy that this was my <clears throat> my um, initial step into um, straightforward traditional miniatures battle game. Um, and uh, um, at some point down the road, I'll definitely break this out. Oh, and I will be looking for an opportunity to play face-to-face. -face. So again, that was uh, Battleground Historical Warfare, Second Punic War. Basic game uh, played with the reinforcements um, box as well. <clears throat>